Let's talk about something called the normal curve. So the normal curve. So the normal curve um, is bell-shaped. So this here is the x-axis, and it looks like this. So it's actually a function that you can uh, put in your calculator and you graph it. And you, when you graph it, it ends up uh, looking something like this. In the middle of the curve, we have the symbol mu. Recall that mu is the mean. So mu would be the average or the mean. And then we have another parameter, sigma. That's the standard deviation. Standard deviation. And how does that look in relation to the curve? Well, you can add the standard deviation one time, and that would put you at mu plus sigma. And you can subtract it one time, and that would put you at mu minus sigma. So if you do that, you get this region here. And it turns out that about 68% of the curve is in this yellow region. If you do it twice, if you add sigma twice, that would put you at mu plus 2 sigma, and that would put you over here at mu minus 2 sigma. In this case, you'd have this region here. Let's use a different color, so say purple. And about 95% of the curve is in the purple region. So what is this curve for? Well, it turns out that probabilities are areas under the curve. So probabilities are areas under the curve. So you might be wondering, what does this have to do with the real world? How would you use this in the real world? Let's briefly talk about that. In the real world, you don't really have a perfect normal curve. All you have is data. So if you take a bunch of data and you make a histogram right, of your data, and your histogram looks roughly bell-shaped, you can use all of the theory that we'll learn in statistics regarding the normal curve. You can apply all of that to the real world. Now, obviously, this is an approximation of the normal curve. So we can expect our results to just be approximations. So given a mean and a standard deviation, we have a curve. Obviously, if you change the mean and standard deviation, the curve is going to change. So there is one specific case that we care about. So if the mean is equal to 0 and the standard deviation is equal to 1, we get something called the standard normal. So we get the standard normal, standard normal. So the standard normal or standard normal distribution is the same as the normal distribution, except it's a special case, right? So in this case, the mean is 0. So that goes in the middle. And sigma is 1. So when you compute mu plus sigma, you just get 0 plus 1. So you get 1. And if you do mu plus 2 sigma, you get 0 plus 2, so you get 2. So it's really pretty. Then here you get negative 1, and here you get negative 2. So this is called the standard normal curve. And so the reason that this uh, is useful is back in the day before computers, um, every time you had a problem, you would have a different mean and a different standard deviation. And so what you would have to do is you would have to turn your data into the standard normal. That way you could use the table uh, in order to, to do the problem. So what you would do is you would use this formula, z equals x minus mu over sigma. So you'd plug in your numbers, your number here for x, you plug in your mean, you plug in your standard deviation, and then you go to the table for the standard normal to find the area under the curve, which is a probability. Then years later, people developed uh, computers, uh, so we no longer need to do all that. So in the videos that follow, I'm going to show you how to compute areas, which are probabilities, 
for the standard normal. Oh, before we finish the video, one more useful thing. If you were to compute the total area under the curve, you would get 1. So if you find the area under the entire curve, in any case here, you get 1. That's it. In the next video, we'll compute some probabilities.